Ramesses III as the builder. Well, remember, when he was crown prince, his father Sagnat, uh, the first king of the 20th dynasty, set him a task to build a way station at Karnak. It ended up being a small temple. Uh, it's got pylons. It's got sm smiting scenes on the front. And that's Ramesses III. So he was a bit like his uh, namesake, Ramesses II. He usurped his father's monument. Uh, on the inside, there are statues of him as Osiris. So it's an open court for pilgrims to go and to ask special favours of Ramesses as, as a, a, a spiritual uh, god, after, obviously after he dies. But that's what's at Karnak. It's a nice, quaint little place to go to. Of course, every king needed a tomb in the Valley of the Kings. And he reopened KV-11. Now, remember, KV-11 was started by Sagnat. And as they were tunnelling in to the, uh, the cliff, it hit the back of Amamensi's tomb. So the project was abandoned. And then Sagnat reopened the tomb of Queen Talzret and extended behind her burial chamber. And that's where Sagnat was buried. Well, Ramesses III reopened that uh, KV-11. So where they hit Amamensi's tomb, they did a right turn. So they repaired the damage to his tomb and they took a right turn and went straight on. So if you have a look at the plan, you can see you've got that descending passageway, comes to that full stop. Right turn, carry on. Wow. And let's have a look what they pull inside that tomb. The Litany of Ra. Wow, yeah. The story of the sun god Ra going into the underworld through those gateways and being reborn at the beginning of every new day. That's why I love the Egyptians so much. They're so romantic. I'm such a sucker for it. The Book of Gates. Each gate is guarded by a guardian or some obstacle that a spirit has to overcome. And that's what the Book of Gates is about. The Book of Anduat. How to travel through the gateway above Abydos. Through the gateway to be with the gods forever. Sucker, the opening of the mouth, opening the mouth of the mummified body so the spirit can make this journey and also for the spirit to be able to re-enter the body every daytime when it comes back from the afterlife. The book of the earth, all living things that grow, all the wheat and barley, you want all that growing in the afterlife for you as well. The coming forth by day spell empowers you to leave your mummified body during the hours of daytime and travel across the mountain from your tomb to your mortuary temple. And while you're there, pop into other mortuary temples and see all the other kings on the West Bank. That's what I think they're up to, trying to recreate their living lives as spiritual lives. Emerging forth into the light, the Kebra, the everlasting life to come. So it's just the way they write it. It is so romantic. When you read it from hieroglyphs, it's, 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 there are sense signs and sound signs in hieroglyph. Sense signs. Um, which are characters' ideas that give you um, ideas as you read, comes from one half of the brain. The, um, the other kind comes from the other half of your brain. So in, um, in Arabic, for instance, it's quite an emotional language because it's full of characters. In English and European languages, it's based on logic. So those are the two different uh, types. Hieroglyphs, you've got both. So it's an overload of emotion and logic at the same time. Now, there were a few problems uh, digging this tomb. 
Um, in year 29, the workers at Della Medina laid down their tools. What was that about? Simple. They didn't have any food left. All the food had gone. There had been no caravan coming from the royal palace to keep them going. They had the initial caravans. Their supplies turned up every one or two years. We don't know the frequency. But in year 29, enough was enough. They just did not have any food. So it's a good indicator that something's going wrong in the ancient Egyptian economy. Now, the crowning glory for Ramesses III is his mortuary temple at Medina Habu. So let's just remind ourselves what a mortuary temple is for. It's there to feed the spirit of the dead king. So the king would have this temple built. It was there, it had two purposes. First of all, to feed the king's spirit. So as he travelled across the mountain, his spirit would go in the temple. The priests that he supplied lands to would provide him with uh, food and drink for his spirit to be rejuvenated to make that nighttime journey to the afterlife. The other purpose of the temple was to provide opportunities for pilgrims to visit um, the spirit of Ramesses III, believing that um, if you had a statue of the king, the king's spirit could go inside the, the statue and um, uh, communicate with the living. So open courts were places where the public could go, depending on how wealthy you were, and you could, um, you could leave offerings and ask favours of the king's spirit. Now, Medina Habu, which is where... Uh, Ramses III built his Mukti temple. It's 150 meters long. <laughs> so the open court is for everyone. Come and join us. The second open court, probably for middle class people, say, or people with a bit of uh, money. Now, as you go through that um, pylon, if you have a look at the map, you see that you see that line there. Well, that line is an indicator of uh, the largest hieroglyphic text ever written on stone. And that's all about the battles of the sea people that Ramesses had on land and uh, in the Nile Delta. So that's why that is so important. So let's start our journey at the front of the temple big pylons. The king's there holding the hair of his enemies. In front of him is Amun-Ra, sometimes offering weapons so he can decapitate his enemies. That smiting scene. Do you remember where you saw it first? The first king of Egypt, Nama, on his pallet, smited his enemies when he conquered Lower Egypt. So they're always looking to follow the trail back to the first king of Egypt. In front of the uh, pylons is that gatehouse, which is fashioned on a gatehouse that you would have in a Canaanite city, a stronghold, a very small gatehouse to keep the enemy out, to keep the city safe. The pylons are there to keep out chaos. So it has a physical attribute and the spiritual attribute as well. So we go through to the open court, which is for the public. We go through the second courtyard now, into the second. So it's all depending on your status in society as to how far you progressed into the temple. The third pylon is the hyperstar hall. The third pylon is about the creation, creation and the forest of papyrus that once grew on that mound of creation. So it's recreating uh, creation. The outer vestibule is going to be for uh, priests, priests only. The inner vestibule is going to be probably be for the, uh, the high priest of the cult of Ramesses III and his assistant. And then you have the Holy of Holies. So it's just like a cult temple. Every day, the high priest of that cult with his assistant would go to the outer vestibule. And then they would 
Um, in front of them is the inner Holy of Holy Sanctuaries, which has two wooden doors. So they checked the sill hadn't been broken. They'd opened the doors. They check that there were no footprints on the sand on the floor. So in front of them would have been a stone pedestal with a statue of Ramesses III and maybe one of the god uh, Min representing um, fertility. Both the statues would be put onto a wooden bark which is outside of the vestibule of, um, in the inner vestibule. So you've got the outer vestibule and then the inner vestibule. Then they would have picked the bark up and taken it to the open court and did their circuits and had rests come into the second court, the third court and back out to the uh, first court again. So that was the whole purpose of the temple was to worship Ramesses III as a living God and ask favours of his spirit. And it's an amazing temple. Now, if you've enjoyed the this video um, it's my intention to go to Egypt and make uh, a video of Medina Habu and um, to do that I need funding so on the next page if you'd like to support this project just make a donation of a pound every pound counts every pound helps as soon as we get to our target of six thousand pounds we'll be able to go to Egypt make a, a tour of Medina Habu, which you can download onto your phone and which will be available free to everyone uh, on the internet. Okay, uh, I hope you've enjoyed the content. Um, take care of yourself. Bye for now.